Hi. So my name is Vesamatta Hartikainen, but everybody calls me Vesku. Please do so. I'm an engineer at Yolla. Uh, I'm part of uh, our software team, so I'm writing applications, uh, contributing to the UI framework and uh, uh, operating system. I'm here uh, to talk about developing applications for Selfish OS. Uh, I know that you all are eager to see the device. Here it is. So this is not the device presentation today, unfortunately, and I cannot reveal more specs than we have said before. But if you want a hands-on demo of the device, come talk to me after the presentation or go talk to Carol, who's somewhere no, there, or grab Karsten, and Karsten also can do the presentation. So we all have our devices with us. And these are quite late stage prototypes, but still prototypes, and there might be minor tweaks here and there for the, for the device. But um, it's already running really beautifully, and I, I really like it and carry it daily around. So the specifications, this is what we have set in public. So we have this beautiful 4.5 inch display here. We have a dual core processor and 4G data. Uh, you have been asking what, what CPU it is, how, what's the clock frequency. Only thing that I can say today is that it's fast enough. We have 16 gigs of storage, and you can expand it with a memory card. There's a 8 megapixel camera and user replaceable battery. Then we have this so-called the other half, so the back cover. Uh, so it's not just ordinary back cover. Uh, it connects to the device, and it can contain smart parts. So device's operating system can, for example, uh, change on change its ambience, so the mood it is in based on the cover. And uh, that's also something that we wish to see a lot of innovation in that you could actually expand your device with different kind of functionality using this the other half concept. The device is running Selfish operating system. And Selfish operating system is a Linux-based operating system. Its roots are back in the Migo. So it is uh, its own operating system and uh, not an Android, even though we use libhybris to utilize Android hardware adaptation. Uh, we also have an Android runtime, which allows users to use Android programs in the device. We had our uh, pre-sales campaign this summer, and, and um, sales are targeted to start by the end of this year. And you can register at yolla.com to be notified when the device is in markets or if we have uh, new pre-sales campaigns still coming. So Selfish operating system is mostly about the user interface. So that's where we have a high level of ambi ambition. We want to make really powerful user interface that is beautiful and where users' content is on the center. So we want to get rid of stuff like toolbars and, and buttons and, and, and alike, and instead interact with gestures. We want, um, we want the user interface to be non-plugging. So instead of popping a dialogue asking every time, we would do this kind of remorse actions that, so that uh, it, if you select a deleting something, it will happen unless you cancel like in in very short time so instead of popping a question you just have some time to to cancel it's beautiful and personal and this is achieved by what we call an ambience so you select a background picture and based on the background picture the system calculates appropriate highlight colors and calculates a uh, more abstract version of the background picture for a for, uh, background of applications and dialogues. Uh, 
All right. To achieve this, here's the structure of our operating system. So the topmost level is the user interface level. This is what Yolla does. Uh, Selfix Silica is our UI component set. So those are QML components. And all of the user interface is built with QML. And we are not cheating. We are using these same Selfish Silica components ourselves to build our applications, to build the home screen, uh, to build the system settings, and the built-in applications. Then we have various input methods. So as we have said, one of our target markets is China. And obviously, this kind of Western thing, Western input method is not OK. So we have um, handwriting recognition for China and support for various other kinds of methods. And of course, even in Europe, we use different kind of characters. So we have more than one keyboard in our, in our input methods. And uh, uh, standard stuff like uh, text prediction. Then we have a home screen. And home screen has so-called events view, where uh, you get your notifications and where you can uh, interact with the various social media. So there's social media feeds like Twitter and Facebook that can be on the home screen. Then we have settings and various built-in applications like uh, messages, phone, uh, the standard stuff you really need to have a working phone. And our applications are based in QML and the application itself is quite tiny. So the close or the topmost, the user interface part is really, really small. We don't usually have any kind of logic inside that kind of layer. Instead, uh, the logic is in the middleware. So for example, our contacts application would not know the details on how the contact data is, is stored. That is in the middleware. And so if you don't like our contacts application, you can quite easily write your own. The middleware, that comes from project, open source project called, called Nemo Mobile. So we have a couple of Nemo Mobile contributors even in this room. Hands up, please. Yeah. And hopefully more in future. And Nemo Mobile is not just about middleware. So I'm, I'm just saying that uh, this is what Yolla is kind of interested mostly in the Nemo. So there is also a proper uh, open source UI in Nemo Mobile. So if, if you're interested in completely open, open source project. Uh, so the key components here are what I have like put on the slides. Obviously, any mobile operating system is going to have hundreds and hundreds of packages. And these were just my opinion on like what are the key stuff. So we have Tracker. For, uh, for media data may mostly. So we are not using Tracker as much as N9 used to, used to. Uh, but we are, we are using it for MP3 images or whatever, music and images and stuff like that. Uh, Mallet is the framework for building the virtual keyboard or input methods. Lipstick is a framework for building home screens. Uh, Grillo. That's a multimedia framework, multimedia source framework. Uh, Gecko. So we use Gecko engine on our browser. And then we have various QML, Nemo, Nemo QML plugins that, that provide QML interface towards uh, the back ends of various data sources. In the core, we use a project called Mer. That's an open source project again. Uh, I think most of you must have heard uh, David's presentation about Selfies and Mer on, on two days ago. And we also have Karsten Monk here, who is like the chief architect of the Mer core. And then various hardware adaptations. And we are, we are using Wayland, and we are using Qt5. So what you are seeing today, or have been seeing on the device and, and are seeing on the emulator is running Wayland and Qt5. And 
it's running quite beautifully. As programmers, we are of course interested is in what, what APIs will be available for application development. We are still defining the set that we will kind of say that we will support as of official API. This is a one draft. So, uh, selfish silica for user interface development. We want the applications, the native applications to look native and that's the only way to achieve it. Qt 5.1. Uh, these various add-ons like concurrent, dbus, uh, graphical effects, uh, feedback for haptics, sensors, for orientation and uh, GPS and whatever. Uh, well, location would be better for GPS, I guess. Oh, sorry. Then we have platform APIs. So this is, uh, uh, we are not as, uh, the difference being that there's a stable and then there's the platform maybe would be more, uh, would have more changes because these are uh, maintained, well, open source project maintained not by us, but of course we need to, so we cannot guarantee as much. Uh, and OpenGL is, OpenGL is obviously for game development, Pulse Audio for audio, GStreamer for video, and we are working with various uh, game frameworks to have them support it, to have them support Qt5 Wayland, and so that those would be available for developers. So we have been looking at SDL, Coco, 2DX, and uh, even the Python support is something that uh, one of our developers, Thomas Pearl, have been cooking up some sort of solution for that. And then we have some platform QML components, things like contact pickers. So you could uh, easily uh, have a contact picker or image picker or this kind of this kind of uh, component available. And and from the middleware, we will support some of those uh, some of those QML components. And most useful to me looks like the transfer engine for integrating your file transfer to the system UI. Uh, alarms, so that you can set up alarms for your user. Uh, Dbus, for easy access to the Dbus. Uh, thumbnailer, for thumbnailing obviously. And notifications, so that you can integrate your own notifications to our event screen. There will be a store application, so that it so that uh, customers can easily download and install applications. And there also will be possibility to sideload applications. And uh, both should support native and Android applications. So how to get started? Selfisos.org is the website that we have. It contains the documentation various tutorials, and of course, the Selfies SDK download link. We have our second alpha version of the Selfies SDK out, so that contains the Wayland and Qt5, so up-to-date stack. It's still an alpha version, so a bit rough around the edges, and we are working hard to release next version. So you would get started, you would go there, you would download the SDK, you would install it, and select Selfies application template, and it's pretty much there. Only thing you really need is to have a, a Mac, Windows machine, or a Linux PC, and install a VirtualBox virtualization environment before installing the Selfies SDK. There's of course a documentation, one of the most important one being this selfish silica documentation so that you get the understanding that 
how you do native looking applications. So this is how it works. David already explained a bit about this. Essentially, we use Qt Creator as an integrated development environment. And then we run two virtual machines with inside a virtual box. Another one is called the build engine. And that contains all the tools, cross compilers, uh, uh, packaging tools, debugging tools that are needed for building and packaging applications. The other one is called the emulator. And the emulator is running x86 version of the service operating system itself. And that is for testing your application, how it works in the environment. Within the build engine, so if you're working both on emulator and, and device, there's a separate target, of course, because uh, it's not the same. It's not the same hardware adaptation. So that's, that's why the picture shows emulator target and device target here. And Qt Creator is then able to use the build engine for compiling, packaging, and then deploys either to emulator or the device. All right, so let's see. I'll show you now how it works. Can you still hear me? Excellent. So this is Qt Creator. I'm just going to create a new project. I'll choose Selfish OS application. I'm going to make to do application. Do -do -do. And I'm going to target the emulator. All right, it created the project. So uh, this is a normal QML project, our Qt QML project. How many of you have programmed in Qt QML? So pretty much like half, quite good, excellent. So what happens here is uh, there's a, in the root of the system is the profile which defines the project. Then we have created some template code here. So the self is application. That's a template code. So we have a simple way of creating the view and, and setting QML to the view and getting the application. And it takes account things like booster so that the startup time is fast. So it's, it's really simple, you can check, and if you don't like some behavior, you can of course modify it. And this is something that might, we might improve also in future. Then we have a simple main function. And like you see here, it just creates application and sets main QML as, as the main, as, as main QML for the, the view. And then we just show it. And main QML itself is an application window and defines a page that is here, so the first page, and it has some dummy content here. So instead of hello, hello sailors, hello small save it and let's run it. And so it's here. So this is the emulator. And like you see from the logo here, it's running in inside Oracle VirtualBox. All right, let's stop it. 
The other, other files in the template project are the desktop file, which defines the application entry for the, for the launcher or the home screen. So this is to do smart devs would be the thing you see on the, on the home screen and it would use this icon here. And packaging, we use RPM packaging and we use a abstract way of defining the package called YAML. So we have this kind of a tool for editing it and if you need any more uh, dependencies than in the like this one, so then you would just add here uh, requires if it's a runtime dependency or a, or a build require you would add here or if it's uh, PC config based then here. So that's the basic structure of the of the project. Let's now start doing something a bit more interesting than this. So first we create our own page and so we are not importing the pages that already exist. Can you the font size, ah, sure. How? Yeah. Better? Yes. So, oh, great. let's call it a page. And to do list, well, that's a, a simple list. So, we're using Silica list view. And um, let's define a simple model. So uh, in more advanced version, you would use only the view part here and you would define the model in C++, but to save some time and, and potentially head banging, I'm writing just here a simple one. And what I do, I do description. Let's put something initially in the list and this is what I need. And the way to... Okay, let's name the model also. So we are giving it an identity. And in the view, we define that we use the model. And delegate defines how we show items on that model. And for list, we have a ready-made component called list item that helps us a bit. And um, what we put in, the, in it is a label, so we just want to show it. And text for the label would be the description from the model. And let's anchor it. No. So center of the parent. And let's make also the list view fill the screen. And see if it works. Or I did or did I do something silly? So, okay, we have our list model now and it knows that I need to buy beer. That's not yet too smart, so let's expand it a bit. So we want to be able to add new entries and uh, I would put it in the top of the user interface so let's add a header. And let's put a couple of things there. So first we put the page header component. So that this is just for showing uh, what the page is about. 
So it's a to do page. And then let's add an input field. So text edit. No, 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 no. Text field. And some placeholder text so that user knows what he's inputting. And an entry. Uh, let's define a width for this thing so that it's not too small. And for um, for um, accepting, we need something. So we are using enter key. So when user clicks enter, then we do our action. And in this case, I guess, if the text is not empty, then we will add it to our model. So we will append it to last. So add it to a description and add the text as a value for it. No, there's all right. And then after we have ad added it, it we don't need it anymore. So let's make it empty. And also we can now close the virtual keyboard. So we can just say that focus is no longer here. Yes. And to make it a bit more beautiful, let us add, let's add some padding between the elements. So we have a team singleton and we are just selecting some padding value there, padding medium would be fine, I think. <coughs> so now we have a, this is the page header. So we have the to do here. We have the text element and we have the list below. And I'm adding an entry. Oh, that shouldn't happen. Uh, by beer feed cat. Okay, so the virtual keyboard disappeared and, uh, and the entry went empty like it's supposed to. So it's still working like I have wanted it to work. We can add a bit more. So one of the things that we said say is that the device is gesture based. So we will have a, a back navigation we are, we are pushing. And the same is that instead of toolbars, we have pull down menus and pulley menus uh, from from below. And to make one of those is, is quite easy. So we can define here pull down menu. So it's now pull down menu on the list. And uh, let's add an item in it, in it. Menu item. So clear all, so or mark all as done. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so there's a, a slight indicator here. So it's slightly bluish. It's a bit difficult to see in this scaling, but it is there. So when I pull down, it will appear. And on the device, it will provide sound and haptic feedback. 
and when the highlight is on, I can just release it, and then it clears the list. Okay, uh, what you see here is the home screen and, and our active cover. So this is what the default template gives you. So it gives you text and a couple of actions. So now we could define our own instead since this is, this is not nice. And the default one has been defined here, but instead I'll define something else. Or actually, it's not mandatory to do it. It's real multitasking, and you can have this uh, classical way of, of seeing what the application is doing. So, so when uh, the cover is undefined, it will just show the contents of the window like it does in the, in the N9 and most other operating systems. Uh, so, let's define it. We have a cover background that defines this uh, kind of in, well, the default, default background what uh, our designers prefer to see in, in uh, these active covers. And again, let's just put a label in it. and center it. And text, I guess, we could take from the model. So, if we have items on it, then we will show the first item. And the description field from it. And otherwise, we have nothing to do, so it's boring. So, buy beer, okay, fine. Let's clear it. And now we have nothing to do. Uh, of course, uh, to be something smart and smarter than just uh, a tile, we can associate actions to our covers, and it's done by defining a cover action list. And uh, for uh, since you saw it, that those had icons, is it icon source? Let's there's a URL for a nice one. And then the action is on triggered signal. Where? Yeah, ah, correct. So it's good to know always that somebody's awake in the audience. That's why I make mistakes here. And again. Pretty sure I made some mistake here. Yeah. Icon source. Yeah, of course. 
you shouldn't use abbreviations. Okay, buy beer. Nothing to do. Yep. So that's how you uh, create the active cover. And that's also something that we really like, would like to see in all the Selfie Silica ap applications, so that uh, uh, the kind of promise of true multitasking would be true. Uh, I already mentioned about the, the remorse action. Maybe we, should, we could do that next. So uh, where's the delegate here? Uh, let's define a context menu for it so you can delete. Menu. I'll define it as a component. So it's a component uh, meaning that it's not visible uh, just, just when it's created, it's, it will be visible later. And uh, context menu defined for it. And let's add a menu item for it. And it's for removing that particular item from the list. Find that function then here. And we'll use function called remorse action. So this function is defined in the list item itself. And like you see from the tip, it requires the text that the remorse item will show and then the action to be taken and optionally you can define your own custom timeout so uh, well let's say deleting it's a bit silly and we define a function for the action itself and it is removing Removing that index. Shouldn't there be a comma? Yeah. Still awake. <laughs> so now you see the. I did the long tap, so you see the context menu, and I click it. And this is the remorse action, remorse action, so I can tap to cancel that, so it didn't do it. Or I'll just let it run and, and uh, then it removes it. And the remorse action, if you do your user interface correctly, it's not a blocking thing. So, so, you, so the user should be able to continue working on whatever he wants to work on. So for example, if he would switch to another page in your application, it should just be considered as an acceptance. So that this, in this way, this would be more powerful than just having explicit dialogue saying yes or no. So we, we are not bothering user, but we are still able to get some sort of confirmation for actions that are potentially dangerous, like, like deleting stuff. All right, so I guess that's the to-do list application now with a with couple of selfies like functionalities, like cover actions and, and remorse timers and pulley menus. Uh, one of the other important applications that comes with the SDK is called component gallery. So there's, whoa, oh, I already had it. So it's this one. So the, also the sources are here. 
And this is what the uh, silica coders themselves use to test their components or to kind of smoke testing their components. And, and this is still quite polished. So it really shows how to use elements like these menus, how this, uh, how all silica components really work. And so going backward and forward is, is really just about the gesture. You can, of course, click on this icon, but still, I think most of the time you're doing gestures. And the benefit of the gestures is that in big display, you don't have to reach that far. Instead, you can grab anywhere. And the same thing in the pulley menu, that you don't have to go here to start the gesture. Instead, you can just grab anywhere. And you should really should take a look at sources of, of uh, this when you are doing your application to get an understanding on uh, what's the intended behavior was. And uh, we, of course, try to document everything, but usually it's a bit easier to take code that's ready and you know that's working and then tweak it a bit and then kind of uh, get your application to work at the same way. Uh, lastly, I'm show showing you a brief video. So uh, why would you write a Silica application instead of Android application or a Qt Quick Controls application if those are able to work as well on the selfish device? Well, the difference is that it will feel more like the platform itself. So here's an example. This is an N9 running a open, nice open source application called Croc, which is a Google Reader client. And unfortunately, I cannot use it because of Google anymore. But it, it was one of my favorite applications on the N9. So uh, I took the sources, and I did an initial port to Selfish Silica. And it was really quick to do. And it feels way better on the, looks nicer, and feels better on the Selfish platform after doing proper porting work. And even after initial quick porting, it's already quite nice. So there's the gesture-based navigation, uh, the toolbars and, and controls will, take, will not take away the space. So it's all about, all about the content. Uh, the theming makes it so whenever I change the ambience or the background, the colors will change accordingly. And it will just feel like, it, like a system application. And another example is this popular Twitter client called Tweetian. And it's also one of my favorites. So, um, and it's really, really, really nice. And like you see here also that the toolbar on the bottom, the indicators on top will take a space. And you end up uh, tapping all around the user interface. And in the selfish version, It's, it's much more a platform look and feel, and uh, you do gestures instead of tapping. And you have more space for your content. If you want to know more, these are the websites. So selfishos.org is for the SDK and tooling. Uh, Yolak.com is for our company. About the MER project and also about the Nemo Mobile project, you will far find information from merproject.org. And obviously, we are uh, big on Qt, and uh, we have a Qt, Qt maintainers working in our company as well. So cuteproject.org. There's a, a lot of good community activity. Uh, Philip here, he's been involved in many of stuff. So this dolphinaric.org is an educational project that educates people around, around these technologies. There is Selfish OS uh, open source applications. 
I don't even know who set up that repository, but it's cool to see that somebody put it up and there's plenty of applications already on GitHub. And these are a couple of uh, blogs that I have encountered on the web that uh, are discussing about development of selfish OS applications. I'm also setting up a planet. All right. Excellent. It, it will be available through DevArmline. It will be announced on the mailing list, etc. Okay. So that was my presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Carol. <laughs> this is a, an, a question from Twitter, actually. Uh, is it possible to share the code of the simple to-do app? Yes. Cool, thanks. OK, we have a question. Uh, I have a question for the gestures. It is uh, really as simple as you have shown to and quite naturally learn all the tricks because when I have occasion to tap to that uh, device, it feels a lot. It feels like there is a lot of magic tricks connected with gestures, which you must uh, learn somehow, not from the manual, but to discover them. It is projected. Uh, it is designed to be easy to learn or there are some magical magical tricks you found out are too strange to normal users uh, that's that's good question with gestures uh, but it uh, the more ambitious things you do in the user interface the more different it will feel and we have been looking for some sort of balance between having a powerful gestures and uh, and uh, easy to learn so I think the most obvious gestures are, are quite easy to learn. So the navigation backwards, and then you need to learn a couple of pushes from the edges. But most of the user inter interface is very discoverable, and there may be an uh, easier way to do things, and the gesture just might be a shortcut. Microphone stopped working, but there are no questions. So thank you for uh, your talk, and let's proceed to the lunch. All right, thank you.